Hey everybody, welcome to another installment of Board Games Hitting My Table. Uh, this is a series where I talk about all the non-new-to-me board games I've played in the last couple of weeks and just give some thoughts about how those games went. So first up, we played a three-player game of Karuba. That was my brother, myself, and my brother's girlfriend, who is very new to gaming, so very inexperienced. And this one is probably one of the go-to games I have in my collection that we bring out if somebody's not so experienced and this one always goes down very well. So yeah, this is a, a really nice puzzly style game by Rudiger Dawn as you are basically trying to place these tiles on the map to connect these different temples to these different adventurers on the on the uh, parameter of the board here and you're basically trying to move them towards their matching temples and race to do that because the quicker you do it, the more points you get. So it's a bit of a, an efficiency puzzle but it's very simple, but it works very well. Probably one of my favorite family weight style games. Um, I played this one so often that I pretty much play it on autopilot, but that's not to take away from the game. It's very good at what it does. And um, I think it's pretty much a mainstay in the collection for the foreseeable because it does fit that niche probably better than any other game I have. So that is Karuba, really good game that I'd highly recommend if you play with kids or again, inexperienced gamers. Next up, I have been playing a, uh, a three player game of Cabo. So Cabo is um, not a very well-known game. I think it's been reskinned as a game called Silver and by Bezier with the werewolf theme. This one is a memory style game, but one way you're trying to shed as many points as you can because the lower points you score, the better because this is a golf style game. So, um, but this one is one of those rare games where on paper, it sounds terrible. In reality, in actuality, it's a really fun little game. So uh, basically you are just building up a, we well, have four face down cards in front of you. And um, you only know what two of them are, at least to start with. And then you're basically trying to substitute the higher cards with the lower cards until, until you're at a point where you're confident enough to call Cabo, which means that you think you have the lowest amount amongst all the other players. And once that happens, everyone else gets one more turn. You reveal your, um, your total results and you'll get points accordingly. But if you successfully called Cabo as in you were the lowest player, then you don't score anything. But if you were unsuccessful, then you score an additional 10 points, which is not a good thing. But as I said, this is definitely one of those games that has no right to be as good as it is or as fun as it is. Um, and it actually inspired me to record a review of this one. So um, be sure to check that one out as it drops pretty shortly. So that is Cabo, really fun game. And again, shouldn't be as good as it is. Next up, I played some more Stella. So Stella was a game I was gushing about last month. This is a, a two player only card game, very puzzly, um, as you are basically trying to build up a telescope of planets here in this little formation. Um, and they have some placement restrictions on, so you can only place the same type of cards next to the other same types. But you're also trying to build runs of cards as well, because your highest run of cards multiplies by the number of stars you have in your little telescope here. So. It's um, got a really cool scoring system where you can score some big uh, multipliers. But what I really like about the game is how you actually place those things in their res respective places anyway. But I won't go too much into that. But if this interests you and you like clever little card games, then be sure to check out my review of Stella because I think this one is definitely a sleeper. Um, should be more popular. Great production by Renegade. And um, yeah, one of the best card games I've played in, in a while. So um, really nice two player one. Um, strikes a good balance of being accessible, but still very thinking restrictive. That is Stella. I've been playing some more El Caballero. So we have played another three player game of this one. This is the, um, well, it came out after El Grande, and as you can see, it has a lot of similar um, artwork and graphic design. But this one is a tile placement game where the only thing that really shares with El Grande is the card initiative system, where the higher card you play, the, um, the in this example, you get to draft your tile first and then place it onto the communal map here. And it also determines how many of these caballeros you can take to deploy onto the map to control these regions. Because you can see you have these different tiles here with numbers on them. And that shows how much influence you have in that particular region. Um, so this is a really cool concept I've never seen used before. And just you know, this game is, I think, from 1998 or something. It's quite old. And um, I think this is probably one of the best tile placement games I've played, or at least one of the best in my collection. Um, I think it's such a good game. There is some ambiguity about the optimal way to play the game because there are a few variations and you can kind of tailor that how you like. So it would be nice to have a, you know, a, a decisive best version, but I think I've got it in my head what, what I like to play. Um, but yeah, really like this one, it's hugely underrated, um, very tense, you know, a lot of fierce competition over those regions and balancing your influence on the map with keeping a steady flow of caballeros is a big part of the game, but 
Really good area control tire placement game, and I will record a review of this one shortly. But do not sleep on this game, despite the uh, lack of attention that one gets. That is El Caballero. I've also been playing... Uh, we played a standard game of Cartographers, so I think we played a, I think it might be a five or six player game. Um, a nice game that you can kind of play limitless really, as long as everybody knows what they're drawing. Uh, so this is a Polygomino style game, but it's a roll and write one. Um, I don't think this art box has got any artwork on it. No, it hasn't. Uh, but yeah, you're basically just drawing um, different Tetra shapes with different terrain on them, such as trees, um, grass and water. and each game has different scoring criteria, which would trigger at certain points in the game. Quite a popular role and right for the last few years. I've still yet to dig into any of this collector edition stuff, um, but I've heard it's good, so I'm excited to do that. Um, but yeah, we played a bog standard version of it, which, you know, I've got no problem with it at all. I'm not, I'm not entirely sold on this idea that when certain cards come out, you can almost sabotage another player's sheet. That's still something I'm not too fond of, but the rest of the game is really good and it has that Isle of Sky scoring system, where, which as I said before, is very uh, variable and it changes game after game, but good one, right? That is Cartographers. Also been playing some more Chinatown. So this one has been probably one of my favorite games of the last year or so. I've tried to get this into the table whenever I have that four or five players um, who you know, like this style of game. This is a, a quite a, an interesting negotiation style game, very economical, as you are basically just trying to increase your influence of these different um, companies on the board. So you're trying to build up these big networks of um, certain types of shops, like you can go to like, the Tropical Fish Shop and Dim Sun and um, Photo, uh, like a photo booth thing. And you're basically placing these tiles on the board, but you can really negotiate with anything on this, on this game. And the higher or the bigger cluster of these buildings of the same type you make, the more income you get. You can strike really interesting deals. Um, by far the best negotiation game I've ever played. I think this is borderline essential if you have the right group for it. Um, and I've never had a bad game of this one. Some of the creativity um, and mapping out and striking good deals is um, just remarkable in this game. It is so much fun. Plays in a great amount of time. Great decisions. Just everything about it I cannot praise enough. Um, and we had a fantastic game of Chinatown, um, where actually I think I won for the first time. So that is Chinatown. Excellent, excellent game. And talking of more excellent games, I've been playing more East. So this is a game, another one that um, you know came to my attention out of nowhere really from, uh, well, I think probably the end of last year. Got another game of this one played, and it is another, another example of this one just being a complete hit. We played this, it was only three players, which I think is, is fine. I think four players is probably the optimal count. But... This is like a, a blind bidding style game with, you've got these area control, I'll say blind bidding, it's not completely blind bidding, it's more area controlled. You're placing these different cylinders in these different regions and then you've got regions within those regions to get these action cars, you get points and you're basically trying to collect these tokens and those, the value of those tokens is going to fluctuate from the game after game with, with, depending on the position on this track on the side which is covered up by this artwork. But one of the purest little... Um, kind of bluffing, area control style games I have. It feels like a real classic Euro um, from bygone age. It's just a brilliant design. Um, again, it only plays in about 45 minutes to an hour. And for me, that just feels so good for the amount of gameplay you get here. All enjoy this one a lot. And um, it's just fantastic. Massively underrated, just criminally so. That is East. If you can find a copy of that one, then I would highly recommend you um, pick it up. More well, recent game now, or at least the reprint is, this is Tinner's Trail. So we played a game of Tinner's Trail yesterday, actually. Uh, this one is a, a Martin Wallace game, a re-implementation of a game of the same title from a few years ago. This is a an auction style game and a, another game with a, an economic edge where you are trying to bid for these different um, for mine shafts, basically, in Cornwall. And sometimes you're going to know what's in those mine shafts, sometimes you're not. Um, and basically whoever wins it is going to reveal that and they're going to put a number of cubes in it depicting metal uh, you've got tin, copper or you've got water as well and you're basically trying to extract uh, the metals from these mines but the more water in those mines the more expensive it is going to be um, to do that so you need to map out the amount of profits you're going to get but uh, at the same time you really have to be cautious of the amount of time your actions take because you have this time track here and every action you take is going to move you further along the track here which means that you will not only have to wait until other people catch up with you, which means that other resources can be gobbled up before you get another turn, but you need to make sure you have enough time to actually get the minerals out of the mines. And uh, that was 
It's such a great kind of balancing act to do. And uh, the game uh, I had in this one, I, I absolutely love it. It's a fantastic game. We had another great game of it. But I think I fell for the same kind of pitfalls I did the last time I played this one, which is not striking when the market is hot. Because the game after round after round, the tin market and the copper market will change. It can go up in value. It can go down in value. And I made the mistake of sitting on a lot of copper when it was worth um, eight pounds each. And for the future two times, it was only worth four pounds each, which means I was getting you know, half the money for my copper, which is uh, pretty much cost me the game. But what a game this one is. Um, I absolutely love it. It's really light, actually, for a, for, a, you know, for a Martin Wallace game. It's so easy to understand, but the decisions are there, and those are the games I really like. So Tinder's Trail, big hit for me. And again, it's not so easy to teach that we played yesterday as well. This one is Tigris and Euphrates. This is a, 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 an absolute classic um, Knizia tile placement game. Um, one that really did kick off that uh, scoring system of you, know, you have multiple different score categories and you're only your lowest of those categories will be your final score. But this one you're trying to collect things relating to the blue, black, green and red tokens you're putting onto the board. These kingdoms are touching each other. They're starting big battles and things. I'm not going to go too far into the rules. You know, check out my review if you if you want to. But this one is such an interesting game. It's one of those games that I don't feel like playing all the time. But when I do feel like playing it, it you know, it really does hit home for me. And you know, that that desire to play it starts building and building again um, pretty rapidly. So um, nothing else like this one in my collection. I think it's brilliant. I think it's um, so unique despite being quite old now. And uh, believe it or not, we played this one at three players again. This was myself, my brother, and my mum, actually. Um, myself and my brother are pretty experienced gamers. We know what we're doing. And we got absolutely smashed by my mum, who's um, who's not terribly experienced, but maybe she's just sharking us. So that is Tigers and Euphrates. Great game. I've got a couple other games here that I've not um, I've not got with me physically, but um, I'll still talk about. So first up, we played some more games of Timeline. So Timeline, another one that hit my... Um, I think it was my roundup last month. This is a game where you basically have a hand of cards and you're playing them in a in a row. I'm trying to put the dates in the right order. And if you get it correct, then it stays in place and you're trying to shed all your cards. But if you get it wrong, you have to draw another card, which will, of course, slow you down. It's a really cool educational game and one that I like a lot. A lot of fun. And um, it just goes down well. I think it's a great game. That is Timeline. Uh, we played another game of Die of the Dead, which is a... A little kind of memory style game as you have a bunch of dice put in these caskets and depending on which casket you activate you get different actions such as um, you know uh, getting new more dice or you can um, kind of climb up these stairs which is going to be this winning condition. Um, I think this game is lackluster I'll be honest. I didn't, think I, I didn't give it the best review when I did it at the time. I think it's even fallen since then for me. Um, I just feel like the decisions aren't really there for this game. There's only four actions and I think uh, you only really use three of them. One of them we didn't even use for the whole game. And it's just so lucky. Um, and yeah, I didn't think there's the replayability there. But yeah, this one I think is um, not going to stick around much longer. And we also played another game of Corrosion. So Corrosion was a game I did praise quite highly last month. And I still think this game is fantastic. I think the actual well, the gameplay is really good. I a great little engine builder. Um, I did stress my dislike for how long the game took and I think I may have even undersold that because we played another game of this one with the uh, recommended um, variant of the game to make the game shorter and it still took far too long. So I just do not think there's enough tiles in this game that make the end game trigger um, happen at the right time and I don't think the actual end game mechanism is right for the game itself. I think there should be something else and it should be kind of reworked from the ground up really because the gameplay is there but the the balancing of the of the actual experience and the length it takes is not right and um, I think it's um, much more noticeable when I played this one again and um, yeah as I said I undersold it when I reviewed it so bear that in mind you know if you check out my review I still stand by the gameplay but I would even stress even even more that it takes far too long and um, that could be a bit of a nail in the coffin for this one for me. Um, but still enjoyed it, but yeah, just um, just be cautious of that. And the final game um, I'm going to talk about on this uh, installment is we played another game of Brian Buru, which is the latest uh, Peel Sylvester game. Very interesting balance of area control and uh, trick taking, believe it or not. So you're basically playing these cards, um, trying to follow suit of someone else who's played before. If you beat them, then you're going to get this area control spot. 
but you actually sometimes incentivize to lose these tricks because you get rewards such as climbing tracks and things. Um, I do think the game is interesting. Um, I did feel like the the interest did wane slightly from the first time I played it because it was all new. This time I think it's just, you know, it's fine. I've got no issue with it. And there is one mechanism I don't like where you have to collect these like Viking tokens, whatever it is, and then you can kind of completely render another player's piece as useless. And just, you know, considering you had to put in quite a bit of work to win that, it feels a bit annoying. But it's a good game. It plays in a good amount of time. And um, I think there's certainly going to be a lot of people who enjoy it. And, um, you know, I didn't dislike it. I think it's fine. But I'm not raving about it. That is Brian Burrow. So that's all the games I played, um, you know, during the second half of February. Yeah, some good games here. And it was nice to revisit some older Euros, uh, which I've been wanting to play for a while now. Because recently I've been playing quite a few lighter games. But yeah, that's all the video concludes off. So thank you very much, everybody, for checking it out. As usual, be sure to um, check out my other reviews and stuff. Um, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you all next time on Chairman of the Board. Bye.